Um, it's interesting that you mentioned C now. We want to take the opportunity to discuss a little bit about open source code in encryption devices. Uh, we've recently seen stories in the news about a vulnerability in the WhatsApp encryption. Um, there was a claim made by an expert in Berkeley that really made some people question their security when using the app. WhatsApp has officially responded to those claims saying that its encryption is secure, but it was actually a feature of the app. Um, I wanted to use this story to ask you about the importance of open source code in the encryption debate. Uh, is that something that we need to encourage? And could that benefit hackers and law enforcement authority in the sense that they would manipulate the code or find security holes more easily? Um, so open source technology is something that Access now promotes um, because you can see what the software is built upon. So if there is a vulnerability, yes, you might have law enforcement able to see that to take advantage of it, but you also have the rest of the world able to see it. So it is a significantly higher likelihood that it will be discovered and able to be patched if it's open source, um, just because of the number of eyes on it. When you have a piece of um, closed source technology, it means you, by nature, have a very limited number of people reviewing that software. Um, and so that software, um, companies that are closed source, like Apple, um, often have lots of audits, lots of high level security engineers, but at the end of the day, they have fewer eyes looking over their code. And that's really one of the big benefits of open source software. Um, I do want to touch on um, a piece that you said about WhatsApp and about the, the features versus the bugs. Because I think this is really interesting. Um, we encourage companies, again, to develop as strong encryption as possible. But there are reasons um, to not have the strongest encryption in every single service. Um, because encryption is tied to keys. And so if you have a service that you by nature want to be able to access from lots of different devices, it doesn't make sense to have a single device with the key on it. It makes it a lot harder to access that data. Um, if you want to be able to retrieve data, um, if you want it backed up, and this is why a lot of people on the iPhone, even though the iPhone hard drive is encrypted, back up their data to the iCloud, which gives that access back to Apple. And it's because they want to know that if their phone um, falls into an ocean, that they can get their data back. And so there are legitimate reasons for um, users not having the strongest encryption in some products and in some services, or um, doing, having practices that, that weaken the protection that they have. Um, it's really important in those cases that you still have some form of encryption and that you're still protecting the data, um, that you're very honest with users. Um, we think it's actually much worse to provide users with a false sense that they have more security than they actually have than to just not provide them the security to begin with because you're going to give them um, this idea that they can do things and that they're protected um, they might take risks that they would not otherwise take, um, and that, that puts them in a worse off position than they were before. And it's really um, important for companies to hear that message, that they need to be honest and they need to be open with their users about what they're doing.